Hello, I'm Mimi. I asked my wonderful community of artists on Instagram for their best art advice and I've collected the ones that stood out the most to share with you in this video. Plus, I have my own little piece of advice right at the end. This video is not sponsored, but if you'd like to support my channel and learn more from me, then consider trying out my Patreon for a month to get instant access to lots of my tutorials and drawing guides. It can feel a bit isolating trying to find your way as an artist, but hopefully the advice in this video helps to show you that there are so many other people who are experiencing the same highs and lows, so you certainly don't need to figure it all out on your own. So I received a lot of good advice and quite a lot of it was about the importance of practice. I especially like this advice from Scribblegum Illustration who says learning to draw is like learning a language. The more you practice, the more confident your voice. And the more I think about that advice, the more true it gets. Just like any skill, art needs to be practiced to be learned. But art is a visual language, so of course we need to practice it to learn how to express ourselves. We don't expect ourselves to pick up a whole new spoken language quickly. We know that it takes lots of practice to get there. So why do we expect ourselves to improve our art and find our style so quickly? Practice is definitely the number one thing that has helped me develop my own art skills. And based on the amount of advice I received that was about practicing, I'm definitely not the only one. I drew every weekday for a full year to develop my art skills and learn digital art and when you look at all of the illustrations side by side you can really see the progress that I had from practicing and practicing and practicing. There was also quite a lot of advice about just getting started and not waiting until the right time. Perhaps maybe you said you can't steer a parked car, so just start slowly and surely, which I really like because it's an easy visual to understand. You can't make progress or choose a direction if you're stationary, so just start moving even if it feels slow, because at least then you're going somewhere and you can start steering your journey. I think we sometimes trick ourselves into thinking that small steps aren't worthwhile, but everything is done in small steps if you break it down enough. Mountains are climbed one foot after the other, and books are read page by page. So if you just start making small steps, you'll be amazed at the progress you can make. Amelyn Oscar Illustrations had the advice, just start, it won't be the best at first, but that's the journey, to get better, not to be the best. And I think that's a great reminder not to wait until the perfect time to start, because if you don't start from where you are now, then how can you improve to get to where you want to be? Like Amelyn says, the journey is about getting better, not about being the best. And I think we all know that perfection is the enemy of progress, especially with art. Cat Curler's advice is trust the process in your art creation as well as in your life. Things do get better in the end. And this is a nice thing to remind ourselves of as we're developing our art skills because it can feel like a never ending journey and sometimes progress feels slow. You will get there. There isn't any reason why you won't if you keep doing what you enjoy, keep practicing and keep learning. I know that it doesn't always feel like you're making progress, but Bipol Artist's best advice was you have to make bad art to make good art. Don't be afraid of producing bad art. And I think that making art that isn't necessarily as good as you want it to be is an important part of the journey. Embrace the wobbly, messy road to getting better and make art even if you don't think it's very good because that's how you learn and grow as an artist. You don't have to even let anyone see it if you really don't want to, but just let yourself create whether the outcome meets your expectations or not. And if you draw something that you don't like, that doesn't mean you should stop. It's exactly why you should keep going because you're learning. You're on the path and you're not supposed to be at your destination yet. Growing as an artist isn't an express ticket and it shouldn't be, so embrace all of the bad art that you make along the way. When it comes to growing as an artist, Evelyn Art suggests 80% of the time draw in your comfort zone, 20% learn something new, and I love this advice. I think it's fun and enjoyable to draw in your comfort zone, and so drawing those things is a great way to have fun with your art. But to develop your skills and style, it's a good idea to also try new things, even if they're scary or don't work out the first time. 
Most of the things that I draw are simple and familiar, but sometimes I try and draw something more complicated or quite different just to get out of my creative comfort zone a bit. Whatever it is that you create, a lot of artists advise that you create what you want to make. Draw with Robin has the advice, the only way to keep your motivation to create is to create what you love. And Colors in My Pocket also says, always create art for yourself and not just to impress others. It's quite easy to get caught up in trying to make things that will impress other people, so this advice is great because your art is self-expression, so it should be something you love if you want to make it a habit. You can still make art for others if that brings you joy, but I think it should also be a priority that you make art for yourself. Sage Leaf Studio says do it for yourself first, others will follow, and there's room for you. I couldn't agree more that there is always room for you, and I hate the idea that there are artists holding themselves back because they think there are already enough artists in the world. It doesn't matter how many artists there already are, there is always room for more art in the world and there will never be a limit. If you're struggling to find where your art fits with other people, Rani EU has the advice there will always be people that like your style. You just have to find them and be patient, they'll find you. Which is especially great advice if you're an artist on social media. If you feel like your audience growth is slow, it doesn't mean that you should change your art style or that there's anything wrong with your art. It just means that your people haven't found you yet and that takes time. On a similar note, Dear Little Sunshine Studio says, don't think of the people that are not going to like your art. Think of the ones that do, which is a great perspective shift, especially for beginner artists. It's normal that not everyone will love your art. I don't think there's an artist in the world that appeals to everybody, but there are always people who will enjoy your art and those are your people. And the last piece of advice from the art community that I want to share is from Random Squirrel Arts who suggests find your why. When business gets tough, it helps you keep going. And I love this advice because purpose is what drives us and what keeps us on track long term. Ask yourself why you love creating art. Or maybe, why do you want to grow an art business? Why do you want an audience on social media? Whatever it is you're working towards, find out your why and you'll be able to use that as your foundation. So if you're wondering what my art advice would be, I'd say don't wait for anyone else to validate you as an artist. You can think of yourself as an artist just because you like to make art, even if it's only occasionally, even if you don't think it's very good, even if you're not a paid professional, and even if nobody else tells you that you're an artist. I spent a lot of my 20s thinking that one day I would like to be an illustrator, but by thinking that I needed some kind of external validation or a formal qualification, I was holding myself back from illustrating because I thought that I wasn't an illustrator yet. It wasn't until I told myself that I could just be an illustrator right now if I started drawing that I broke down the barriers that I had made for myself and instead made a habit of making art and here I am three and a half years later. If you have some advice that you'd like to share with us today, then please leave us a comment below. And thanks so much to the artists that I mentioned today for sharing their best art advice and also to everyone who wrote in some advice on my Instagram stories. Also, if you'd like some additional help on your creative journey, then consider joining my community over on Patreon where you get access to my drawing tutorials, monthly illustration club and lots of other goodies that I share each and every month. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then I'd love it if you could give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more art videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.